Hello, I'm Kurt Steinbrook, pastor of Faith Lutheran Church in Wesley Chapel, Florida, and we are going through the book of Romans. So thank you for joining us for this video as we look at Romans 12, verse 21, talks about overcoming evil with good, and I'm just glad to have you here with us. We've done a whole series working our way through Romans at this point, looking at a verse or two, or sometimes a little bit more than that at a time, and you can catch all those videos on our YouTube channel for Faith Lutheran Church in Wesley Chapel, or by going to our web website, which is faithwesleychapel.com. And of course, you can find other information about the church. You can find other series as well and devotions and things like that. So before we jump into Romans 12, 21, let's take a moment to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and for uh, the love that you show us every day. And we pray that you would uh, fill us with your spirit, that we would as we read this passage, we would understand it, that we would believe it and accept it, and that our lives would be changed by it, that we'd be drawn closer to you during this time, and our faith strengthened by your word. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's read our passage. This is Romans 12, verse 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. So do not be overcome by evil, overcome evil by good. Now, this is the end of uh, Romans, or yeah, the end of Romans 12. But we still need to remember what the beginning of Romans 12 told us, that it started with, I urge you, therefore, and that therefore tells us that what we're about to hear in Romans 12, 13, 14, and so on, goes back to Romans 1 through 12, we, or 1 through 11. We need to remember those things, which told us that we're all sinners in need of a Savior. None of us can earn our own salvation. We can only receive it by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. It's a gift that is given to us when we have faith in Jesus Christ. And even after we are saved, if you want to talk about it that way, um, is that salvation, it continues to come through faith. So even though we sin and we struggle with temptation and things like that, it still comes down to it being a gift from God that is received by faith. And it's always only by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. So as we read all these commands and all these, these things about how we should be living, we need to keep that context because this is not how we get right with God, nor is this how we keep our salvation or anything like that. This is how we get to live now as the children of God, that we get to live in a new way, in God's way, rather than having to live in the old sinful ways of our flesh when we were enslaved to sin. So keep that in mind. All right. So. What's going on here? Well, evil is around us, right? It's all around us. And it's sometimes it's tempting to give in to that evil, right? It can also uh, be tempting when evil is done to us to respond with evil, to want to get revenge, to hold a grudge, things like that. And when we do so, what happens? Well, evil starts to consume us and it will, it, it just worms its way into our brain, into our lives but there's a better way. There's God's way, right? Overcome evil with good. Overcome evil with love. This whole section, as we've been looking at it, verses 9 to 21, it started with love is genuine. And then it continued to describe what that love was like in all these different behaviors that we do, that we show honor to others, that we uh, don't repay evil for evil, that we show hospitality, all these different things that are described. These are uh, the ways that love overcomes evil. It starts among believers, right? Verses 9 to 13 talked about how we can love one another uh, with the love that, that God has given us, with the love that God has shown us, and see a truly different way of living within the church. I don't just mean like in you know the gathered body of the church, but I mean among believers. So that that church may be your home and your family and the believers there. It may be 
uh, friends. It may be people in that local gathered body. It may be even with people beyond, uh, you know, out into the world. Uh, you know, Christians that are all around the globe. That there is a different way of living as children of God. We can forgive. We can be humble. We can serve. We can honor one another. We can love each other. And that's different. And that, it starts there in the body of Christ, but then it spreads out. And we can love those who are outside of the church as well, even those who hurt us, trusting that God will ultimately deal with any injustice, that we don't have to be the Avengers, that we can rely on him to take care of that. And this frees us to love, to show kindness, to, to pray for and genuinely hope for the forgiveness and salvation uh, of the people that we are encountering, not only for, for forgiveness amongst ourselves and reconciliation with us, but with God, so that they can experience the salvation that comes by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, just like we have. Not deserved. It's never deserved. We didn't deserve it. They don't deserve it. And yet God gives it freely. We receive it through faith, right? And so we we can genuinely want and desire and do the actions to bring the love of God and the gospel to those outside of the faith, those outside of God's body, of the, the body of Christ, so that they can become children of God too. This is conquering evil with good. You know, it, it's firmly grounded, what, in the victory of Jesus Christ that he has already accomplished, that he has already accomplished. Jesus overcame evil with good, right? He made his enemies his friends by loving them and by sacrificing for them on the cross and then being raised from the dead, right? That good and indeed the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ continues to overcome evil every time a heart is turned in repentance to God, receives that those promises of Jesus Christ in faith. That's evil being overcome by good. Whenever we we see love, you know, winning out over over evil, that's evil being overcome by good. God loved us first, and so now we can love others, reflecting that same gracious love that God has for us on to others. The love that God has for them, so they can see it. As we reflect it onto others, we reflect it out into the world, to all those around us, which can bring peace and reconciliation and overcome evil, and especially to overcome the evil one and his presence in the lives of people all around us. All right, that's it for today. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Go in peace and serve the Lord. God bless.